my pleasure to be with you to show you this powerful software program that will have you creating your own stitch patterns in no time. The possibilities are so vast that they are truly awesome. You are not even limited by your imagination or drawing abilities. Together, we'll load the program and go through all the basics of the program, and then we'll expand you to everything from the fun to the exotic. I would like to suggest that you simply sit down and relax and watch the tape through one time before you design along with me. When you're ready to design along, use the fast forward button when you feel like it. And do feel free to stop and rewind the tape at any time, for as many times as you like. The video is divided into sections that build on the previous section, so it's a good idea to work with them in the order given, no matter how excited you are about a technique in the middle. Let's get started by loading the software onto your computer. I must tell you that for those of you who already know all about your hardware, loading this software is going to be a breeze. If you're unfamiliar with your hardware, you may need your computer expert to do the initial setup to provide you with the hardware system requirements found on page 8 of your PC Designer software book. If your computer person is unfamiliar with your very sophisticated Pop sewing machine, please take the instruction manual with the system requirements for them to look over. It's been our experience that computer difficulties happen because of extra equipment that the consumer did not know they had in their computer. Or the computer company had configured ports differently, as in disabled ports, and the owner was unaware of what had happened to their computer prior to their purchase. Only your computer tech can test your computer for unusual setups or equipment that may be running in the background that need to be turned off during your transfer of designs to your FAF sewing machine. First of all, the computer and sewing machine must be turned off before connecting any cables. You wouldn't want to blow anything out, would you? That would be more excitement than was planned for this video. The FAF cable requires a male RS-232 serial port on the computer. It's possible that your computer will need a 9-pin adapter. Your FAF dealer can get an adapter for you with an extra 24 inches of cable. Most computer stores also sell adapters, but make certain that you do not get a mouse adapter. They look the same, but won't work. Make a note of which COM port you have connected it to. For example, COM2. The other end has a small round connector that plugs into the sewing machine, right here. Boot your computer in the normal way. This is Techie for Turn It On. And go to the Program Manager of Windows. We'll be using the Microsoft Windows version 3.1. If your program is a higher version, some of your screens may be arranged differently and have different icons for the same functions. Please refer to your computer manuals or to your computer tech for any differences. Before installing the program, you will need to turn off the screen saver and any antivirus program. After you have loaded the PC Designer software, and when you are ready, you can reactivate the antivirus. Insert your PC Designer disk in either the A or B drive. We will go to File. Click on it with the left mouse button. Go down to Run and click on it. This function of computers starts an application or opens a document. For the command line, type either A or B for the drive that you put it into, followed by a colon and then Setup. There are no spaces. It must be all one word. The Run Minimize box may be clicked on with the mouse, and that would tell the program to be reduced to an icon every time it starts. We won't do this. Click on OK. You will hear your computer make strange whirring noises and ticks while the screen message is starting setup. The next screen is a welcoming message to the PC Designer program. It gives you three choices, Continue, Exit, and Help. Click on Continue and the setup will create a program manager group 
and an item for the PC designer. An item is just another name for an icon or little picture. There is no typing necessary for this screen. It already contains the needed information that this program will be copied to your computer C drive and the file name is PCDWIN. The three choices are the same, continue, exit, or help. Again, select continue. Now, on your monitor, you will see all kinds of file names as it copies the program onto your computer's hard drive. You can see the percentages as it continues loading the program. There is a cancel button at the bottom of the screen should you need to quit the program. The final screen tells you that the setup succeeded and be sure to send in your registration card. Click on OK. You may now remove the disk from the A or B drive. Keep it in a safe place. It's now safe for you to go back and reactivate your screensaver and antivirus program. Let's open this wonderfully creative program by double clicking on the PC Designer icon. You will see the opening screen of your graphically oriented program with its exceptional capabilities that allow you wonderful freedom of design. Before we begin designing, we need to tell the program what machine we will be using and the port we will have it plugged to on the back of the computer. Use the mouse and click on machine at the top of the screen. Go down to the bottom of the next item that is configuration. Click here. This screen allows us to set up the program. On the left, you have the choices of communication ports. We have used COM2. Select the COM port you are using on your computer. If you don't know, ask your computer tech to try them out one at a time. The wrong ones won't work, but it doesn't harm anything to try them. We are using the FOF Creative 7570, as all of the program features are included. Click 7570. The 7550 and 1475 do not use all the features. The program will not allow access to the features that do not apply to the specific model sewing machine. The screen size is set for standard monitors. The command 1 to 1 will only work properly with the correct screen values. The low transfer rate is the automatic default because it is the most reliable for all machines. The high rate is not available for the 1475. Now that we have made all of our selections, click on OK. If the actual sewing machine is not the model selected, an error message will appear on your screen whenever communication is attempted. The program will make the necessary model change for you if you click OK, or no will cancel the change. already loaded some designs into the computer and from design I'll load BMP file. And then choose car 1 by double clicking for a fun car BMP to have on the screen while we take a quick tour of the menu. We will be using the different functions and features as we use actual designs to illustrate how to use them. Here at the left is file. Click on file. This menu contains commands to create new stitch patterns, open, store and retrieve stitch patterns, print, make notes regarding the stitch pattern, and switch to M designs. The next is edit. Here we can edit our design with common editing commands. You can have the toolbar and status bar displayed or hidden. Design is really exciting. Click on design. It is here that you can load, fade in or fade out, and delete BMP template files. A BMP is a bitmapped graphic file format. It is used in PC Designer as a template or guide in bitmapped graphic file format. It is used in PC Designer as a template or guide in setting stitches. You can scan or draw your own template in any graphic software application that allows you to save your work as a black and white, uncompressed BMP file. We will be using your Windows Paintbrush program to create your own BMP file. Click on Machine. We use this menu to configure your program in the very beginning. 
It also contains the commands for loading P memories and built-in stitch programs, saving the sewing machine memories in a file, and synchronizing the sewing machine. Of course, everything is important, but it is especially important to synchronize any time you have made changes in the MNP memories, the card, and if using a different machine. Here we have our tools. Click Tools, please. This menu contains commands for changing the stitch pattern, filling in areas with satin stitching, resizing stitch patterns, and automatically tracing a BMP template with stitch points. Next, click on Format. You will use the zoom functions mainly from the toolbar as you are designing and redesigning your stitches. Here is where you can choose work area size and turn on the automatic stitch function. And finally, we have help. This can be very useful, especially in the beginning when you are first learning the program, as it is a quick and easy reference. This is the perfect time to go into how to use the help menu. Click on Help at the top of the menu, and the PC Designer Help dialog box opens. You could also press the F1 key. From the File menu, you can print a topic. From the Edit menu, you can copy a topic to the clipboard. From the Help menu, you can get help on using the help files. Click the Search button, and you can type a topic name. It is searched for and displayed. Click the back button to return to the previous screen. If you are new to computers, do take the time to familiarize yourself with this feature. Use the scroll bar to go on through the screens. Do you see that the whole menu is listed? All the green text can be clicked on, so let's click on toolbar for our example. The toolbar has the most frequently used tools for designing. They are all also listed in the menus. Let's go through each tool because they make designing so quick and easy. Click on this button on the toolbar and the Open File dialog box opens. In the File Name field, you would highlight the file name, Piece PCQ. Click OK. Use this when starting a new design. Now that our work area has a design in it, if we click on the Open button, it will either erase the previous design, if no changes have been made to it, or if a change has been made to the design, a dialog box would open to ask if you wanted to save the stitch. You would have three choices, Yes, No, and Cancel to abort the Open command. The next button looks like a computer disk, and that is for save. Click here, and it will update the file with any changes you have made to the design. If the stitch pattern has not previously been saved, this button will be dimmed and not an option. For a new stitch, you would use the Save As command beneath File. This button is a picture of a printer. If you have a printer for your Microsoft Windows program, this will print a hard copy of the stitch pattern in the work area. The printing is always in landscape to enable the printing of long patterns like 9 mm sequences. If the displayed pattern is narrower than the paper, it will print approximately the same size as the screen. If larger than the width of the paper, it will be reduced to fit. If longer than the paper, it will print on as many pages as are needed. If you go to Format and click on One to One Size, it will print like this. The outline is the curved inner edge of the hoop. The plus in the middle is the center of the design, and if you have set your screen size correctly, it will be an exact size for you to use as a template for placement and sewing. Let's look a little closer. Do you see where the outline stitches are not really next to the bird? It will look the same way when sewn so fixing it on screen first will save you time later. And do you see this little gap in the stitches? That too should be repaired by moving the stitches before sewing. This makes an attractive home deck pillow, doesn't it? Click Open File. Double click Piece PCQ to put our dove back on the work area. Now let's click on the eraser. 
Wow, our burden leaves are gone. This illustrates how wonderfully important the undo button is to us. Click undo. It reverses the last action or command. It can only be used once for any action. If unavailable, as it is now, it will be dimmed. Load P memory is the next button on the toolbar. It is here that you can access the designs you have previously stored in your FOFS P memories. Click Load P memory. The dialog box opens with the directory of P memories. Highlight the memory you want and click OK, or simply double click on the memory slot. The P memory contents will be transferred to the work area. If the work area had been occupied, as it is now, a dialog box would open and give you the standard three choices, yes, no, or cancel. When you want to send a 9mm or maxi design to your machine, click on Send P Memory. A list box with all P memories will open. The amount of memory needed to store the stitch pattern currently in the work area and the amount of free memory available on the sewing machine will be listed here. The check box switches the grid off or on, which is the default. If on, the computer will only send stitches having even X coordinates to the sewing machine. In most cases, this will improve the sewing result. The Y coordinates are not changed. Highlight the P memory that you want to send your design into. The first empty P memory will automatically be highlighted. Click the OK button or double click on the memory slot. If you select an occupied slot, a dialog box opens asking if you want to overwrite the memory. Click Yes to replace the existing design or no to go back to the directory to make a different selection, or cancel to abort. We'll cancel. This creative card is a programmable and erasable card that already has stitch patterns on it. To show you how the next two buttons on the toolbar work, I'll insert it firmly into this slot. It's important that it's in all the way to make complete connection. Now, click on Load Card Stitch. If the work area is occupied, you will be given the standard three choices. Yes to save whatever is in the work area, No to replace, or Cancel to abort. We'll click on No. The first time per session that you request to see what is on the card, the icons of all card stitches will be loaded from the card. The Creative Card dialog box opens showing the icons of the stitches contained on the card. The name and size of the currently highlighted card stitch is shown. Click on another stitch, and then it will be listed. At the right, you can switch modes to show 9mm, maxi, or frame stitches stored on this card. To bring a card stitch onto your computer screen, double-click on it, or highlight and OK it. Click on Butterfly and click OK. Send Card Stitch is our next button. To send a stitch to a brand new creative card, we must first format it for your machine. This is a very important step. Place the card into the sewing machine. Press the card key. The screen will ask you to number the card. You may choose any number between 1001 and 1999. That will be plenty of room to grow in, won't it? Let's choose 2. Press OK and confirm with OK. That was simple to format, wasn't it? Now you are ready to send your design to the card by clicking on the Send Card Stitch button. A box opens showing the transfer status. Finished! Let's look at where our design went. Click on Load Card Stitch. Do you see it here on our card? The most recent design will always be at the bottom of the list in all modes. This is fun, isn't it? Now let's bring in a built-in stitch program of the sewing machine. Click on the 09 button. A dialog box opens. 
the stitches are identified by their numbers as listed on the lid of the sewing machine. Go to your keyboard and type in 193, the anchor. Press Enter. Delete looks like a stick of butter, doesn't it? We use it to melt away the highlighted stitch point or section. Let's click on this stitch. Now click on the Delete button. It can only be retrieved if you immediately select the Undo command. Click Undo. You can also use the Delete key on the keyboard. Highlight the stitches in the center of the anchor. Click on the Delete button. Set Stitch will allow you to insert stitch points by clicking the left mouse button or using the arrow keys on the keyboard together with the Enter key. The arrow pointer is attached to the new stitch. Drag the new stitch into position and click to set the stitch in position. The new stitch points are inserted into the stitch pattern after the highlighted stitch or section. We'll make the crossbars pointed. With Move, place the arrow pointer to the stitch or highlighted section then press and hold the left mouse button. A box is placed around a section. Drag the box to the new location and release the mouse button to position it. Now let's highlight a small section with Select. Highlight a stitch by pointing to it and clicking the left mouse button. Highlight a section by pointing to the first stitch in the section and clicking the left mouse button. Then point to the last stitch in the section. Don't click yet. Press and hold the Shift key while clicking the left mouse button. Do you see that the sewing path between these two stitches is highlighted? You can tell because the lines are dotted now. Most commands will either replace a highlighted section or add something after the last stitch in the section. If a section were highlighted in ascending order, the highest numbered stitch in the section would be the last stitch. If you highlighted the section in descending order, the lowest numbered stitch in the section would be the last stitch. Let's pick an example to see how this really works, okay? Click on 09. Do you want to save the pattern? Click No. Type 82 and press Enter. A notice will appear on the screen that the pattern will be too large for the working area. Click Yes. Do you see that the mode has automatically switched from 9mm to Maxi? The 9mm design looks very small on the Maxi work area, doesn't it? Unhighlight by clicking the right mouse button. Click on the stitch to the left of the center motif. Shift and click on the stitch to the right of the motif. Let's replace this flower section with a satin heart. Click Machine. Go down the menu to Insert Stitch Program and click. Type 164 and press Enter. Now, click on the Move button. Hold down the left mouse button and move the heart to center it between the leaves. This is really pretty. Let's save it. Click on File. Click on Save As and type in 82-164. The name can have eight numbers or letters in it. Check that we are in directory C colon PCD Win and click OK. Let's click on the next button on the toolbar. This is Rotate. You can rotate the highlighting or the entire pattern by moving the mouse with the left button pressed down or by using the arrow keys. You can fix the rotated pattern by releasing the mouse button or pressing the Enter key. The rotation center is located at the first stitch in ascending order. If you use the mouse, you have to move the mouse cursor around this rotation center to rotate the pattern. When a stitch pattern will exceed the work area after rotating, 
a dialog box opens asking if you want to edit the stitch in another work area. Click yes to rotate the stitch and switch in another work area or no to abort the command. When a stitch pattern after rotating will exceed the largest available work area, a dialog box opens telling you the pattern will be too large. In the status bar, let's click on small frame to see how our stitch would look. This next button is length mirror and it rotates the stitch pattern or highlighted section in the work area 180 degrees and flips it front to back. The stitch pattern will sew in reverse order. Now click its button on the toolbar. The highlighted section or the entire stitch pattern is flipped front to back in the work area. If there is not a highlighted section, the command will work for the entire pattern as you see here. This button is a simple pattern mirror. It flips the stitch pattern or highlighted section in the work area top to bottom. The stitch pattern will sew flipped right to left. Click its button on the toolbar. The highlighted section or the entire stitch pattern is mirrored right to left in the work area. If there is no highlighted section, the command will work for the entire pattern. When you are designing, take your time and play with these two mirror buttons as they can be very useful when you are putting designs together. When you click on change size, it opens a dialog box where you change the dimensions of the highlighted section or stitch pattern in the work area. A stitch pattern or section can be enlarged or reduced proportionally or not. Do you see that both length and width measurements are in millimeters? The length box is already highlighted, so you can simply type in your new length. Type 55. We will choose proportional by clicking in its box and then click on OK. When you choose proportional, you only have to type a change for one dimension either length or width. The highlighted section or the entire stitch pattern is changed to the new dimensions. If there is no highlighted section, the command will work for the entire pattern. You noticed, didn't you, that our pattern, which was a satin stitch design, is now rather spacey. Click on Format. Click on One to One to see what it would look like if you sewed it. It doesn't look very filled in, does it? That is because the number of stitches remain the same. They were only spread out to become our new size. You might want to use a heavy embroidery thread, like Looney 12 or Cotty 12, to fill in the spaces. It can give you a lovely hand embroidered look, like we have here on this hair bow. Be certain to remember to clean and oil your machine before and after using these textured threads. It isn't just a nice thing to do, it's essential. Also, these beautifully textured threads need special needles. Use the system 130N top stitch needles in size 100 with the Cotty 12 and size 110 with Looney 12. Another method of filling for stitches is to use two embroidery threads like the Alcazar as though they were one in a size 100 130N top stitch needle. You might even, in some cases, choose to sew your design as bobbin embroidery. Bobbin work, or bobbin embroidery, as you know, uses a heavy decorative thread in a bobbin case with loosened tension. If you have not experienced bobbin embroidery before, please see your local authorized FOF dealer for the supplies you need and possibly the videos for your 1475, 7550, or 7570 for additional information. button in the toolbar is fill-in stitch. It looks a lot like a radiator heater and is a real jewel on our toolbar. It's for filling in an area with satin stitches. There are many different effects, so let's begin with a simple example. Click on File. Click on New. Go down to Mode and click on 9 millimeters. You can see that the Select Stitch button is highlighted. That means we are ready to draw. Move the mouse so that the pointer is at the left of the work area. We want to start at the middle. 
move the mouse until the coordinates at the bottom right of the screen read x equals 0 and y equals 27. In working with 9 millimeter and maxi stitches, one of the basic concepts is to fill from left to right across the screen. This will utilize the optimum forward feeding motion of the machine and sew out smoothly. Continue drawing by clicking the left mouse button everywhere you want to stitch. You will find, if you haven't already, that curved areas need more stitches to keep the curve shape. Straight areas, you can simply click a stitch at each end of the area and allow the automatic feature to fill in the extras. Use the Move button to clean up any funny stitches. With our design in place, let's save it. Click on the Save button on the toolbar. Because it is a new design, the first time you click the Save button, it will ask you to give the design a file name. Type in a-begin.pcd. Check the directory is on c colon backslash pcdwin, which is the automatic default, and you won't have to hunt through other directories to find your newly designed stitch. Click on OK. At the top of the screen, it now reads a-begin.pcd. Click on the Fill In button. Fill In A is the automatic default of the program and allows more custom choices in defining the final look of the satin stitching. It automatically calculates the best angle for the defined fill in area. Therefore, stitch angle is not an available option and the box is dimmed. Stitch density can be changed by typing a new number in the box. Base stitch and centerline options are available. Select either by putting a check in the box. Double click in the stitch density box and type 0 0.20. A base stitch is a row of stitches that follows the outline of the satin stitch area or hides under the satin stitches. Click base stitch on. Selecting base stitch hides it under the satin stitching and deselecting base stitch has it follow the outline of the satin stitching. It is only available for fill in A. Click base stitch off. We won't use this for our first example. Click center line on. Checking the box activates the center line function. Center line is only available for fill in A. Center line is a stitch or needle drop in the center of each zig and zag of the satin stitching. This can be useful when filling in leaves or petals by automatically adding a vein down the center. Click center line off. We will leave our first sample plain. Click OK. The lines can define an open or closed area. That is a definite advantage with A fill-in, that it can be an open area, an option that is not available with B fill-in. First, click on the stitch just above the straight portion on the left. Shift and click on the stitch at the right point. Press Enter to retain the highlight of this portion. This is now the first side. To complete, we need to tell it where we want the other side. Click on the left side just below the straight portion. Shift and click on the stitch just below the point on the right. Press Enter and the fill-in happens like magic. A dialog box opens for your approval. You can accept, change your options, or cancel. The design, as it is, is excellent, but let's just look at the other options. Click on Change Options. This time, click on the base stitch and click OK. There has been an added line of stitches that hides underneath the satin stitches. It will sew the base stitch first and satin stitch back over itself. Again, you can accept, change, or cancel. Let's change. Click Change Options. Click on center line, click off base stitch, and click OK. Now it looks as if there is almost a double row of stitching through the middle of the design. It's because each thread as it passes the middle of the design is secured with a stitch. Let's click on Change Options again.
click on base stitch and leave center line selected. Click OK. We want our design to sew in a continuous row, so we will go back and change our options. Click Change Options to be without either base stitch or center line. Click both off, click OK, and click Accept Stitches. We'll go to File and Save As and type in A dash begin one dot PCD. So we will still have our outline design as well as our satin design. Did you notice on our satin design that fill in A threw away the outline? This is very important to remember when using in combination with B fill in that must have a complete outline. You might need to add an outline for B fill even if it is only a temporary one. A fill in is generally the best choice when designing 9mm and maxi stitches because you can arrange the stitches to basically feed the fabric forward when satin stitching. Let's do just one more A fill in with our design. Click on Open File. Click on A Begin. Click OK or double click on the file name. Click the right mouse button to de-highlight and click on Fill In. Leave the density at point .2 and leave both baseline and center stitch off. Click OK. Click on a stitch in the lower left curve. Shift and click on a stitch in the lower right curve. Enter. Click on the left upper side stitch. Shift and click on the right point stitch and enter. The two differently sized lines produce the following view. The stitches on the small line are set according to the selected stitch density. On the larger line, the stitches are set evenly, however, at a greater distance. This time, let's select fill in B. This style is the quicker method since the area does not need to be defined by lines. The area must be a closed section of your stitch pattern. A section that is not completely closed may not be recognized by the program. Stitch density and stitch angle are options, and changes are typed in their boxes. You can choose between two different types of fill-in B by switching the option Structure Stitch on or off. If you have selected Structure Stitch, this is the default setting. The intermediate stitches will be placed so that they will emphasize the outline of the fill area. If the option is off, you will get an equal and symmetrical output. Click on Cancel. Click Fill In button on the toolbar and choose Fill In B. Leave the density at 0, 0.20 and leave the stitch angle at 90 degrees. Leave Structure Stitch on, then click the OK button. Move the arrow pointer to the area you want to fill in and click the left mouse button. Fill in B fills an entire area. The fill in is displayed and the fill in options dialog box opens. You can accept the fill in, change it, or abort the command by clicking a button, just like fill in A. We'll change options so that you can see the different effects of stitch angle. You can choose between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Double click stitch angle and type 180 degrees. Click OK. A 90 degree angle will zigzag with the needle swing. A 180 degree angle zigzags by using the feed dog movement. And a 45 degree angle uses both needle swing and feed dog movement. As you have noticed, Structure Stitch is only available for Fill-in B. Fill-in B adds intermediate stitches within the satin stitch area so that the stitches are not excessively long. When activated, this function places the intermediate stitches following the shape of the area. Our circle of heart shows what a difference an angle can make. 90 degrees follows the shape of the upper line of the design. 180 degrees and 0 degrees the satin stitches are horizontal, but echo the opposite sides of the hearts. The 270 degrees follows the bottom point of the heart. The 45 degrees to 135 degrees are curved toward the top, while the 225 degrees and 350 degrees are straighter, 
because they repeat the lower shape of the heart with the four millimeter stitches. When you choose to have structure stitch inactive, the intermediate stitches are placed in an even grid-like manner. You will still achieve different looks by the angle you set for these stitches. Fill in B is best used with small frame and large frame stitches. It can be used for 9 millimeter and maxi stitches only in very small areas. Continuing with our toolbar, the next button is stitch length. It limits the distance between stitch points of the entire stitch pattern or the highlighted section. This function inserts stitch points only when the distance between stitches is greater than the number in the dialog box. Having stitches at a consistent distance gives the sewn stitch pattern a smooth appearance. This command is especially useful to even out the stitch points after using the auto trace command on a BMP template. Let's click its button on the toolbar. A dialog box opens where you type a number in millimeters for the maximum distance between stitches. The distance can be any number between 1.0 and 6.0. Type in 2.0 and press enter. And stitches are added to your stitch pattern to conform to your selection. If there is no highlighted section, the command will work on the entire pattern. Any stitches that are set after executing this command will not have the stitch length set. You will need to select the command again to set the stitch length in the new section. This button with the minus sign in the magnifying glass reduces the current size of the work area by half. Click its button on the toolbar. The work area size is reduced. Click again and click again. This is about the size this 9mm design will actually sew. The plus sign in the magnifying glass doubles the current size of the work area. It's easier to see 8-way feed stitch programs in a magnified work area. Click its button on the toolbar. The work area is magnified. Click again. This is great to use for finding details and exact stitches you want to move or change. This completes our tour of the toolbar. You will really enjoy the convenience and speed you gain by using it. Now let's go to the M designs. The M design section of the program relates to the M memories on the sewing machine, and it's where you will create new stitch sequences. You can combine built-in stitch programs, alphabets, 9mm, maxis, and P memories. A sequence can hold up to 85 characters. You will view the sequence exactly as it will be sewn. You can make changes, corrections, and additions to it before you ever sew a stitch. Go to File, go down to M Designs, and click to open it. A message comes on the screen. Do you want to save the pattern? This time, click No. Click on File. This menu contains commands to create new stitch sequences, store and retrieve sequences, print, and make notes regarding the sequence. This also is where you can switch to P designs. Click on Edit. It contains the common editing commands. You can also choose to display or hide the toolbar and status bar. Personally, I always like to have mine shown because I'm always using them. Click on Machine. This menu contains commands for loading end memories from your machine and built-in stitch programs. Here you can save the sewing machine memories in a file, configure the program, and synchronize the sewing machine. Click on Tools. This menu contains the commands you need for changing dimensions of stitch patterns and of entire sequences. You can even change the needle position with these commands. You can also delete and duplicate here. Click on Letters. This menu contains the alphabet styles. It opens the menu so you can change the style. The alphabets are accessed by typing directly on the keyboard. As you type each letter or number, 
It appears on the work area at the selected or highlighted position. If a section of the stitch pattern is highlighted, the typing replaces the highlighted section. Click on Outline. Type the word Outline. Now isn't this easy? Use the left arrow on your keyboard to move the cursor to the far left in front of the zero. Type a P, which gives a pout line. Use the right arrow key to go to the end E. Type S. Now we have pout lines. That's what little kids have instead of frowns. A sequence can hold up to 85 characters. Click on Format. Here you can zoom in. Click and zoom out. Click on each option and see how it changes the screen. Click Repeat. Click Mirror Up. Click Mirror Down. This allows you to see how the design will look when you sew multiple rows. It doesn't sew it this way automatically, but it helps you visualize it. Click on Help. The first help under Help will give you information about every part of M memory designing. The keyboard shortcut keys are next. The mouse information is listed here. Info gives you the information about your PC designer version and copyright. The toolbar for M designs has some of the same tools as for the P designs. Open file. Click no to save the sequence. Click on Scallop FLG. The sequence was edited with another sewing machine. If you convert it, missing patterns will be skipped. Do you want to convert the sequence? Let's choose yes. You will see how nicely it converts patterns. Click Format. Click Mirror Down. Click Format. And click Mirror Up. Click Mirror Down again. It looks best this way, doesn't it? Now, click on the Print button. This is what your printout looks like for your notebook. Now, click Format and go down the menu to 1.1 and click it on. Click the Print button again. What we see on the work area is the scale that the printer will print. The Undo button is just the same, but we have a new button for Redo. It reverses the last Undo command. If it's unavailable, it will be dimmed in the menu. Load M Memory. This button transfers an existing M Memory sequence from the sewing machine to the work area. Use this command when you are starting a new sequence design and the work area is empty. Now, click its button on the toolbar. The M memory directory opens. Highlight a memory slot and click the OK button or double click on the memory slot. The M memory contents are transferred to the work area. Use this command when starting a new design. Send M memory. The icon with the arrow pointing toward the M sends the sequence that is currently in the work area to the sewing machine for storage and sewing. Click its button on the toolbar. The M memory directory from the sewing machine opens. The first empty memory is highlighted. Click the OK button and the stitch pattern is sent to that memory. You can highlight any other memory slot and click the OK button or double click on the memory slot. If the memory you selected is occupied, a dialog box opens asking if you want to overwrite the memory. Click the Yes button to overwrite the memory with the new stitch pattern. No to go back to the M memory directory and select a different memory slot, or Cancel to abort the command. So, click on Cancel. Load P memory. As you see here, you can also bring P memories onto the work area to make into a sequence. The 09 button lets you use built in stitches that you choose by number. The eraser will delete any highlighted stitch or group of highlighted stitches. 
Highlight a stitch. Click the eraser. Click Undo. Click Redo. Length Shorter button on the toolbar. This decreases the length of the highlighted stitch or section of the sequence. Click on the Length Shorter button several times. Length Longer. This increases the length of the highlighted stitch or section of the sequence. Click on the Length Longer button until the highlighted area becomes elongated. Now, click on the Width Narrower button several times. It decreases the width of the highlighted stitch or section of the sequence. Width Wider. I'll bet you already know that this one increases the width of the highlighted stitch or section of the sequence. Click on it until the computer beeps. It's telling us that we have reached the maximum width. Pitch Left. The purpose of this is to move the needle position left in a highlighted stitch program with multiple needle positions. If a highlighted stitch program has multiple needle positions, the symbol less than, greater than will be shown after the word needle position in the status bar. For example, program 00. Click on 09. Type 0 and press enter. Do you see that the greater than and less than symbol is now in the needle position in the status bar? Click on pitch left on the toolbar. The needle position moves one half millimeter to the left. It really changes the look, doesn't it? Now, let's use pitch right. Click on it until the computer beeps to tell you that it is as far as you can go. At the bottom of the screen is the status bar. It displays information about the sequence and individual highlighted stitches within the sequence. Creative displays the model of Creative Sewing Machine selected. Use the configuration command in the machine menu to change the selection. If the machine that is connected differs from the configuration, a dialog box opens asking if you want to change the configuration. This only occurs when you try to send something to an M memory. When you change to another machine of the same or different model, always use the sync machine command in the machine menu to transfer all P and M memories from that machine to the computer. Letters displays the selected alphabet style. The default style is script letters, but we have been using the outline letters and they are still selected. Sequence length displays the total amount of stitch patterns in a sequence. Width displays the maximum width of the sequence. Length displays the overall length of the sequence. Below these fields is the actual pattern box. All the commands inside the box refer to the stitch pattern at the cursor position, the highlighted stitch pattern. When a section is highlighted in increasing numerical order, the information refers to the last stitch pattern in the section. When a section is highlighted in decreasing numerical order, the information refers to the first stitch pattern in the sequence. Sequential number displays the numerical position of the stitch pattern at the cursor position. This is the position of the stitch pattern in the sewing path. Pattern number displays the program number, P memory number, or M memory number of the stitch pattern at the cursor position. Width and length display the dimensions of the stitch pattern displayed in sequential number field. Coordinates displays the positions of the first needle drop of the stitch pattern displayed in sequential number field in relation to an invisible grid. The X coordinate shows the length position and the Y coordinate shows the width position. These coordinates are calibrated in millimeters. Needle position shows the position in millimeters of the needle when it takes the first stitch and the last stitch of the stitch pattern displayed in the sequential number field. Center needle position is zero. When the number is a minus, it is in the left needle position. When it has no symbol, it is in the right needle position. If a pattern has multiple needle positions, 
you can change the needle with the left pitch and the right pitch. Let's program in a scallop stitch program that uses directional feed. The directional numbers we will be using are found on the help screen under the title Open Stitch Program. Program in the following stitch program. We'll be using some shortcut keys to speed our designing. They are the F keys at the top of your keyboard plus the control and insert keys. Start with a new work area. Click 09, 52, and enter. Repeat F6, 243, and enter. Hold control and insert two times. F6, 242, enter. Hold control and arrow down to change the width to 0 0.5. Hold control and insert eight times. 0, 09, 52, enter. F6, 243, and enter. Hold control and insert two times. F6, 242, enter. Hold control and arrow down to change the width to 0 0.5. Hold control and insert eight times. 0, 09, 52, and enter. F6, 240, enter. Hold control and arrow down to change the width to 0 0.5. Hold control and insert eight times. F6, 247, enter. Hold control and insert two times. F6, 240, enter. Hold control and arrow down to change the width to 0 0.5. Hold control and insert eight times. F6, 247, enter. Hold control, insert two times. Doesn't this make a great border? Now, move the arrow to the first stitch number 52 of our pattern and delete. Press F6. Then stitch number 56 and enter. Change all of stitch 52 to stitch 56 by the same method. This is an easy way to create many different borders. Using scallops for finishing edges is just beautiful, isn't it?